Hi. Hi, it's Maria from KinderCrave once again, and today I'm going to show all of you PC users, as well as any Mac users that might be out there, how you can edit photos to remove um, faces or names so that you can safely put them on the internet without violating your students' privacy. The great thing about this tutorial is I'm going to be using a website, an internet program called PicMonkey. And the really nice thing about it is it's a very dynamic site, but you do not have to download anything your computer. You can do all of the manipulating to your photo online and then just save the photo completed when you're done editing to your computer. So um, it's very easy to use, it's very user friendly, and you don't have to do any crazy involved downloading. So I'm going to take you to the site right now. Here's the PicMonkey site, and it has many wonderful features on it, which I use all the time on my blog. Um, but the one I want to show you right now is an editing job. So um, I'm going to click on Edit a Photo, and as you can see, PicMonkey is spelled P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y dot com. So I'm going to click on Edit a Photo, and I need to find a photo in my computer, and I already set one aside. It's another one of me, so... Please forgive that. <laughs> um, it's going to take a second to come up. And here I am, and I'm going to tell them, you know, this might be an image of one of my students, and I love the picture, and I want to put that on my blog, but I do not want to have the face because I'm trying to protect that person's privacy. So what I want to do is look at the editing bar on the side here, and there are many wonderful different interesting ways to edit your photos but the one I want to actually use is the retouch feature and it's this thing it's supposed to be lipstick because this is more of a photoshopping kind of a deal here but there's a good trick in it that works perfect um, when you click on the lipstick see if you see that different images bring up different kinds of edits that you can do I want to do the makeup type edits and I've been experimenting a little bit on this and the wrinkle remover does the best job of blurring out faces. There's a couple of tricks because it's not intended to blur out an entire face beyond being recognized. It's supposed to enhance features not make them go away but if you use it the right way it works perfect. So after you click on the lipstick go ahead and click on wrinkle remover and you can change your brush size. If I move my mouse over to here, you can see that it's kind of a little circle and I need it bigger. So I'll make it bigger and you can see there's a gray circle that's sort of an indicator of how big the brush size is going to be, how big of a surface will be edited. So when I can move that over here, mm, that's a tiny bit bigger than I would want. So I can edit it back down. That's just about perfect for the size of my face. And there's a fade thing here too. It's always sort of default set at 12%. You can set it lower or higher. Um, all that I, I'll try it 1% right now. It's the lowest setting. Oh, 0% even better. As you can see, it said 0%. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse, put it on the area that I want to edit, and this won't let me drag. It's just clicking. So I'm going to click the area, and you can see I'm starting to get blurry. The more I click, the blurrier I get. And it's going to reach a point where it won't let me blur anything else. It's pretty good. I, I like how this has a little bit more control and it doesn't do the weird streakiness that my iPhoto retouching does. Um, what you need to do after you do any edits is you need to go to click on Apply and it'll save it. If you didn't get as much effect as you desired, let's say you, you're thinking, oh, this is still kind of recognizable. I don't want it to be this recognizable. All that you do after you click Apply is go back to Wrinkle Remover and choose your brush, brush size again, fade it as much as you want. I like, I like having it really, really low. If you choose 100% fade, it's basically transparent and you won't be able to see any changes you did. I want my changes to be obvious. So I it at 0% faded. And I can go back and I can click on it again. Um, it's subtle, but there is definitely a difference. Once again, to keep it in place, I'm going to click Apply. Let's say I want to do it one more time. Back to Wrinkle Remover. Bring the fade down. 
make the brush size bigger. And now there's, it's virtually impossible to figure out who that person is. I'll click apply. And when you're done, this image is not saved on the PicMonkey site. You manipulated it here, but it does not save anything for you. So what you need to do is um, there are buttons here at the top. If you ever make any changes you don't like, you can click the undo button. And you can see it undid that. If you decide you want it back, just click the redo button. Same thing as what your computer probably has like on your web browser. Um, there are other buttons here. Um, to be honest, I haven't really tinkered with them very much. I usually just edit my picture and then click Save. And it's going to pop up a little box. Um, it's going to let you give your photo a name. My photo is currently called Pumpkins. That was what it was when I uploaded it and it's trying to keep the name. So I'm going to click Save Photo. And it's going to ask me you know, where I want it saved. I like it right on my desktop, so I'll click Save. And now it's going to say, this picture already exists, do you want to replace it? For, for things that I am deleting and editing out, I don't like to replace the original file. If I replace it, all I'm going to have left is a blurry-faced picture and not a nice, crisp, clean one that I might want for some sort of project for my kids. So I'm going to cancel this, cancel it again, and before I save it, um, I'm going to just call it like Pumpkins 2. So I know that, or even better yet, Pumpkins Edit. Now I can save the photo. Save it right to my desktop and I won't be replacing anything. If I scroll down and look at my desktop, here is the original Pumpkins right where I left it. And here's the new one that's been edited. Pumpkins with it blurred out. I like having both. Hopefully you do the same. Okay, so I can go back. If I have more pictures that I want to edit, all I need to do is um, you can either X this here and it'll take you back to the home screen, or you can click Upload and it'll let you choose a brand new picture or whatever it is that you want to go ahead and edit again. I usually just click the X and it takes me right back to where I started. Um, this is a totally free, wonderful program. I encourage you to experiment with PicMonkey on your own. Maybe try blurring some photos and check out some of the other interesting features they have for editing photos. I hope this has been very helpful to you and I will see you again soon.